Welcome to the Gigaspaces Zap Event Container Screencast. Event handling is one of the most difficult things about data processing, mostly because there are so many ways to do it. You can have triggers that execute as soon as data is written or batch processing to run at a certain time. You might want transactions or complex selection criteria. You might want to poll for potential events or expect notification. You might want synchronicity. Zap supports event models based on both polling and notification with which it can support a number of similar models from other technologies. First, some terminology. A producer is something that creates the circumstance for an event. This is where data is pushed into a data grid. It's basically writing the data somehow. A consumer is the event listener, the element that gets an event and handles it. This is what you know, receives the event. A polling model is used when the consumer specifically looks for events that might have happened over a time period. It's basically something that says, at intervals, check to see if there's something to process. There are a few different ways to see the polling model. In typical messaging terms, polling is a point-to-point -point mechanism. A notification model is used when the data grid itself examines data as it's written to determine if something is waiting for that data pattern. Data is then pushed to the consumer. In traditional messaging, notification is a pub-sub mechanism. That's a lot of preamble to getting down to code, isn't it? There are a lot of ways to show event handling. It's a complex subject. First, let's see the most common pattern for event handling on the Extreme Application Platform, the Spring Configured Event Handler. This is our event handler. It has two parts that are really important. The first is the template, which basically defines a query that defines our object that we're looking for. This is the definition of the event that this handles. The next is an event handler. Both of these are uh, configured via event you know, annotations. There are some more annotations that describe the type of event handler. Um, this is actually invoked with a really simple class, the event test class. We've got a bunch of different tests down here. Um, all it really does is it loads a configuration, which is this one right here. All this does is it defines some spring things to say, you know, look in this package. Um, it defines the space and then it, you know, it turns on the event handling uh, annotations. The data feeder itself, what it does is first it gets a, a reference to the space itself so it can write data in. Then it gets a reference to the handler so, the, so that we know that the handler has been initialized and is waiting for events before we you know, start sending events into the system. Um, this isn't really necessary at all. The only reason we're doing it is just to enforce order in spring. Um, we output some information here to say, yes, we've constructed it, so we've got some debugging information. Then our run method, all it does is it runs right after post-construction, which is why this is so important right here. Um, then it constructs a data object using a builder, writes it into the space, and then waits for you know a few hundred milliseconds to see what happens. Then what it does here is it reads everything out of the data grid you know, to make sure that we you know, have processed our, our data. Now, if we look at this right here, what we're doing here is first it, the system will request a template here, which is the query. Then it will handle the event whenever a, a matching item comes into the system. It will call this method with the item. If necessary, it can, it can pass in a reference to the, you know, the corresponding space. We don't actually need this. We can delete this if we want, but the idea is that here if we need to write in some data or interact with the space with data that is not associated with this event, we can actually you know, add this in and it will work fine. Um, then it will consume the event. Now you'll notice that we have a void here. If we return a data item from our event handler, that data item actually gets written back into the space. The event that comes out of the space is literally taken from the space. It's removed. Um, if we return an item, that item is written back in. If we don't return anything at all, it's the same as just a, a consumption of the event and the event goes away entirely. So let's go ahead and see this thing running just to show the, the system in action here. So we've got it running here. You can see that it's loading up everything and then all of a sudden we run. We have constructed our event, we build our template, we then you know output the template so that we know what the template is, is looking for. Then it tells us it's consumed this object. This output right here is actually coming from our data feeder. 
which this output right here is actually coming from this line right here, which is telling us there are no events into this in the space, which is exactly what we want. We wanted to write an event and have it consumed, eliminated entirely. We can see that it was processed right here in this line, but we see that it was uh, eliminated whenever the array here is empty. So that's our first one. Let's look at something where we're actually processing the data and writing it back in. Uh, back into the space. This is our rather originally named data you know, pulling to package. The data feeder is exactly the same. There's no difference here at all except for the package. Um, it still you know writes something in, waits a short period, and then checks to see if there's anything in there. The event handler, however, is different. This is exactly the same. However, here what we're doing is we're actually returning our data object. After we set the processing to true, we're saying, yes, we've processed this. Then we return that same object back in the space. Now, if we see this run, it will get slightly different output. So now we're running the test again. We're waiting for the space to start up. This is embedded. Now here, we actually handle the data object. Again, nothing magic here. This is exactly the same as we did. The only difference is the output array after the data feeder is done actually shows us that yes, the processed flag is changed. We have the same ID right here, the same unique ID, so that we can see that it took the object, processed it, and wrote it back into the space. Now, there are some other interesting uh, characteristics here. We don't have to return a data object. We can return any type. So let's look at our, again, originally named data feed, you know, pulling three here. The feeder here uses a different type altogether. We're going to have a, record, a reverse request event, which is basically going to, um, our, our model here is just a string, really. Uh, all it does is it takes a, uh, a string and it tells, it whether, it tells us whether it's been processed or not. Nothing, not really, no real need for this. But the idea is that our event handler, uh, our data feeder sends in an event with some text to reverse, and the event handler is supposed to reverse the text and put something different back into the space. So here we're saying build our text to reverse and write it into the space. Then we wait, then we dump everything that's in the data grid back out. Now the main, the main interesting thing here, of course, is going to be in here, which is, again, we're building a template. We're you know, we're looking for a reverse request event. Then down here, when we actually handle the event, you'll see that we get a reverse request event, but we return reversed data. Everything here is pretty much the same. The only difference is, of course, our little code here, which, which reverses the string. And then it returns this type back into the space. Now let's watch this happening just so that we can actually validate that we are actually running. So we start our test, all very exciting, I'm sure. Um, and you can see here, again, we've built the recourse, re reverse request event. We've handled the reverse request event. We've gotten the text backward here. We've got this ID. And then what we see here is we're actually building reverse data. We set the ID to be identical just so that we can associate the original, the return event with the original. We reverse the data and we store it back in the space. And there it is. So what we've seen here is a messaging system that consumed data without any output. We've seen a messaging system that consumed data and returned altered data of the, of the same type. And we've seen a messaging system that took data and returned a different data type altogether. Now, you can configure all of this. And we, you know, obviously we've used annotations here, but you can also configure all of this in uh, XML itself. Here's the actual XML, a, a simple string, spring configuration that doesn't use any annotations at all. And you can see we're actually building the exact same thing. We're using, this is the polling one model. We don't have the test set up to use this, but you know, it does actually work that way. Now, you might be asking what the main benefit of all this is. The real benefit of a messaging system like this is that routing is really pitifully handle, easy to handle. Here we have an event handler test that doesn't use the space at all. Because everything is invoked with simple methods, we can actually construct an event handler ourselves, build the reverse request, call the event handler explicitly, and check the data coming back out, which means we have a testable system that doesn't require a messaging platform to run. 
it runs super fast and it's you know really pitifully easy to handle because all you're doing is you're looking at your inputs and trying to make sure they match your outputs and the system itself will make sure everything is written back in the proper way so hopefully this has uh, given you a quick run through of the event handling system possessed by uh, gigaspace's zap hope you've enjoyed it thank you